Grounds, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. In today's video, we are doing the seven books for seven days book tag. So hey, hi, how are you? Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. This tag was created by Darian over at Darian Reads. I will tag her as well as the original video down below in the description. And if you don't already subscribe to Darian, go do it. She is an absolute angel and I love her with my whole heart. And she created this really cute book tag that I'm very excited to do. It is centered around a vacation, hence my shirt, duh. Like we're on vacation, are we not? <laughs> So we'll go through each day of the week with the questions related to each of the days and we'll pick a book for them. So let's get right on into it. The first day is Monday. So it says travel day is always so tiring. Name a book that feels like drinking coffee. Honestly, okay, I have the perfect book for it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> my answer for this first prompt is Bunny by Mona Awad and here's why. <laughs> so when I was reading this book, I definitely was getting like little bursts of like giddiness. Very similar to when you drink a cup of coffee in the morning and you get that first like rush of caffeine and you're just like, everything's great. <laughs> in this book, I, like I said, I kept getting really intense moments of like, I just like kept laughing. And I got this overwhelming sensation of like euphoria. I don't know. This story is just absolutely wild. And there were just parts that made me feel very similar to that first caffeine kick of the day. However, on the other hand, this book also made me uncomfortable and <laughs> gave me like a weird tummy feeling, you know, much like coffee. Like if you drink too much coffee, you get a little like uneasy. You got coffee belly is what me and Caleb call it. Very similar. Like it went from bouts of euphoria and giddiness and laughter all the way to like, this is really weird, really kind of messed up. I'm uncomfy. So yeah, that's a great, that's my answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> I, I didn't like the answer at first, but it's grown on me. The next day is Tuesday and it says, you realize you forgot something important. Name a book that was forgettable. Oh God, let me go to Goodreads. I wanna give you like the best answer that I have because I have a potential answer, but I wanna see if there's a better one. Okay, I have my answer. So a book that was forgettable for me was definitely The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I don't think that I could give you an adequate synopsis of what this book is about because I've forgotten. <laughs> it's basically, like I know it involves our main character, Vasya, and it is set in the Russian wilderness. So it's very cold, very snowy in the winters. And there is a bunch of like Russian folklore tied into the story. That's all I have. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I distinctly remember listening to it on audio and also reading it with my eyeballs. And even that couldn't help keep my attention. I know that I like, I 100% fell asleep while reading it. The writing was not bad. And I know that some people really do love this book but it just, it could not hold my attention. I don't know what it was. I just did not care. And that's really all that I can say about it because otherwise I have forgotten everything else. The next day, if you don't know, is Wednesday. And it says, you go on an excursion for the day. Name a fast paced book. Ooh, hmm. So an obvious answer for this question would likely be like a thriller or a mystery, but I really haven't read many of those this year. And the one that I did read, I gave a three stars. So I want to give you the answer of A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. I remember reading this and by the end of the book, I legitimately was on the edge of my seat because so much was happening and I was just so anxious about it. It was such a great book. This is book two in the Darker Shade of Magic series. The first one being A Darker Shade of Magic. Um, this one in particular has like a magical competition within it. And by this book, I was already obsessed with the characters, had a real connection to them, and already understood like the world and the magic system from the first book. So I was really able to just immerse myself in the story and it was super quick paced, but I know that it just progressively got more and more serious and more and more intense. And it was definitely a great read. I love this series so much. If you have read the first book, A Darker Shade of Magic, and you didn't really like it too much, keep going because I gave the first book only three, four, no, I think I gave it four stars. Um, but it was just okay. But the second and the third book right here, absolutely incredible. So if you're wondering if you should continue, you should. The next day is Thursday and it says, 
the most underrated day of the week. Name an underhyped book. I know exactly which one. For sure, The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This book is absolutely phenomenal. I read this in one day and I almost gave this answer for the last question, but it, this isn't really like a fast paced book. It just really grabbed my attention and it was just really well written. So this book is set in the coast of Maine and it has really good representation of mental health, bisexuality, and just the family dynamics are really, really well done. In this book, we have our family, the Larkin family, and our main character, Violet, her great, great, great grandmother was the only survivor of a shipwreck that happened along the coast of Maine. She actually made it all the way to the shore and started a new life, but the ship named the Lyric has never been found. And the book says that wrecks seem to run in the family. Our main character, Violet, is tall, funny, and musical, but she keeps partying with the wrong people. And her brother, Sam, is sent to a treatment facility for a suicide attempt. Now, for the summer, Violet is sent off to live with family that lives on the coast of Maine, where she meets some new people, and one of them is a wreck hunter. So they end up teaming up, trying to find the lyric. And like I said, this book has a really, really well-written family dynamic, and the representation in here is just really, really nice. So if if that sounds interesting to you at all, pick it up because it is adorable, it is sad, it is beautiful, it is underhyped. The next day is Friday and it says, you go out for a celebratory dinner. Name a book with food on the cover. I was not prepared for that. Um, I mean, this works. This one is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This literally looks like a table setting. Um, it has like a still life-esque vibe going on. Uh, there's definitely some lemons, lemon, and it looks like maybe plums and oranges. Those are foods. This counts. This is a book I got on vacation recently when me and Caleb had to get away for a weekend and just, you know, take some time. But this one says, blindsided by her mother's sudden death and wrecked by a recent love affair, 31-year-old Casey Peabody has arrived in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the summer of 1997. They do not have a plan beyond determination to live a creative life. This transfixing novel explores artistic passion, ambition, and the terrifying and exhilarating leap between the end of one phase of life and the beginning of another. Writers and Lovers is an unforgettable portrait of an artist as a young woman. This cover is just so cute. It is so cute. And I think that it sounds really, really good. This is one that I definitely wanna to get to relatively soon. I mean, there are so many, but here we go. Food on the cover, this one counts. Saturday is the next day and it says, you don't want the trip to end. Name a book that ended in a cliffhanger. A book that ended in a cliffhanger and one that has not left my mind since I've read it is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I will never know what really happened at the end and it's something that keeps me up at night. <laughs> this book is basically about a secluded elite university following a dangerously curious rebellious undergraduate who uncovers a shocking secret about an exclusive circle of students and the dark truth beneath her school's promise of prestige. It is an absolutely wild book and I loved it so much. It definitely has mixed reviews here on booktube because it's not something that everyone will enjoy, but I loved it. And that ending <sighs> upset me for sure. <laughs> the next day is Sunday, the last day of the week. And it says, you're sad that the trip is over. Name a book that made you cry. For this one, I think that I will go with Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book is just absolutely incredible. It is following our main characters, Augustus Everett and January Andrews. They both write opposite spectrums of stories. She writes best-selling romance with happy endings, while he writes more general, more contemplative literary fiction. And they're both staying at neighboring beach houses for the summer, and they both are experiencing writer's block. So they agree to swap genres and write a different story for the summer. And it was just absolutely incredible. The story itself, Emily Henry is an amazing writer. The book itself was a super quick, easy read, and the story was not as straightforward as what you think it might become. It is messy and it involves a lot of like family drama and just personal growth. And it was just really, really incredible. I definitely cried at the end and I wasn't really expecting to cry. I mean, as I kept reading it, I was like, man, this book's gonna mess me up. And it did. I definitely cried at the end. <laughs> and that is the end of the tag. So if you are watching and you want to do this tag, that's who I'm tagging. I'm tagging you right now. And that's all I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me for a little bit. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe down below. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.